It's spooky season, so let's talk about everyone's favorite spooky cinematographer, Roger Deakins. What are you fucking nuts? No, but seriously, I know we all think Roger Deakins is the ghost, but do you ever think of him in the same breath as horror? Probably not. You see, Roger Deakins doesn't really shoot horror movies. I suppose the closest he's ever come to shooting a horror movie was M. Night Shyamalan's The Village, which we're going to get into more later. Personally speaking, I actually don't really like the way a lot of modern horror looks these days. So when I'm looking for inspiration for horror frames, I tend to still look at Roger's work. Because if you look close enough, he is a master of creating suspense, mystery, and terror with his frames. But one of my favorite examples of that is his work in 2003's House of Sand and Fog. If you haven't seen this movie, please put it at the top of your list. It's totally a forgotten gem, and specifically in Roger's filmography, it is highly overlooked. It's not a horror movie by any means. It's just a really great drama piece. But just look at these frames. Some of this stuff looks right out of The Exorcist. All of Roger's go-tos are on display in full force here. Naturalistic lighting, single point sources, high contrast, and full silhouettes. It's these silhouettes that I really gravitate towards. Just the way he lets characters become draped in shadow instead of being overlit just to see their faces. I'm not sure why so many DPs are afraid to let characters fall away, but the mood of this scene from this lighting is immaculate. You can see a lot of the stuff that he did in this film also translates later to Denis Villeneuve's Prisoners. Roger has this uncanny ability to make the most boring looking crap feel cinematic. And honestly, I think it all comes down to simplicity. In the priest basement sequence in Prisoners, this flat out feels like its own little horror short film. Detective Loki is just lighting the basement solely with a flashlight. And from my understanding, outside of maybe a bounce board, that flashlight is the only thing lighting this scene. It's not overlit, it feels real. And because of this, it adds a creepy factor to the scene that elevates this thriller to borderline horror genre territory. If you want to see my deep dive on Prisoner specifically, I have a whole video about it. There's a link up in the corner. But like I said before, the closest to a horror movie Roger has ever shot is The Village. And the funny thing about The Village is it might be Roger's most minimalistic work in his entire career. I've watched the making of this film probably 10 times at least, and I'm always just amazed at how simple everything is. Nearly all of the exteriors are just overcast daylight. No modifiers, no negative fill, just whatever nature is giving them. There's one scene in the village though that is one of my favorite horror scenes of all time. Let me show you. There are different types of love. The thing I love so much about this scene is again, how simple it is. Not only in lighting, but in framing as well. Cutting to the points of view of each character, never showing the actual stab, the top-down shot, all of it is just perfect. I know M. Night Shyamalan has a very precise way of working and obviously dictated a lot of how this scene was shot, but Roger's lighting follows all of those same principles we've been talking about. It never gets creepy. It never becomes horror. It stays natural to the whole film. And because it's almost flat and kind of boring, it becomes all the more uncomfortable to watch. It's a terrifying moment happening in a mundane, normal room. The thing about horror cinematography, especially lately, is it's trying really hard to be scary. It's constantly reminding you that you're in a horror movie or a TV show. And look, I get it. There's absolutely a place for this type of work, and I still often appreciate it. But I just feel like lighting or filming horror with the deliberate intention of trying to make something look scary often misses the point because scary things happen to us all the time and we have to experience them in the mundane nature of our own lives. So the way Roger Deakins grounds horror in the familiarity of realistic lighting evokes a deeper, more authentic dread that stems from the same eerie reality of our daily lives, rather than some overt, overthought, overlit attempt to startle. I fuck. Now, it's been a while since I've left you with an actual demonstration at the end of one of these essays. Normally, what I like to do is teach you a bunch of stuff and then put it into practice to show you how you can apply it 
to your own projects. I hope to change that going forward. It's just extremely difficult because it takes a lot of time to actually put projects together. But because it's spooky season, I love making a little horror short film this time of year. And what better way to make a horror short film than being inspired by Roger Deakins to do so. So I'm gonna leave you now with my new horror short film, The Blue Hour. And I want you to think about the stuff that we've been talking about because it's what I've been interested in. It's what I'm watching, it's what I'm inspired by, and hopefully it reflects back in the work that I'm trying to produce. So I hope you enjoyed this little video essay on Roger Deakins' horror cinematography, and now please enjoy my new short film, The Blue Hour. I'll see you in the comments. Cheers. forget sometimes. Yes, I'll go.